Queen Elizabeth has been meeting with religious leaders to discuss an imminent global war that she claims will bring about the end times for humanity. At a meeting with Russian's patriarch Kirill and the Archbishop of Canterbury, the Queen said, One must now make the necessary preparations to say goodbye to loved ones, as one cannot assume who will live and who will die. Many will die in these final days, according to this BBC production staff. My beloved country is about to enter its darkest period in the coming months as a brutal and apocalyptic war will be waged in the East. October 30th, 30 days after the election. Suspected region Northeast, specifically New York, first phase, no rule of law, drill involved combat arms in metro areas, active in reserve. Source says active duty and reserve service members are being vaccinated as they are being deployed in theater. Second phase, limited rule of law, military and FEMA, consolidating resources, controlling water supply, handing out to public as needed. Third phase, authoritarian rule of law, possible new acronym or term for martial law, curfew restricted movements, basically martial law scenario. So the Queen goes on to say that she's not really worried about Christmas this year as she is concerned with the terrible consequences that we are going to face as the war drums beat ever stronger, the Queen said. So the Queen's going to her bunker. Are you making yours? Don't forget, Obama thinks that global warming is our biggest threat. I happen to think it's nuclear warming. Our biggest threat is nuclear. And it's not global warming, it's nuclear warming. And I'll tell you what, we're going to work very hard on that situation because that situation is getting more and more and more out of control. And Hillary talks tough about Russia. She led the way in Libya. She's trying to start a, an air war with Russia over Syria, which means if Hillary gets elected, we're kind of going to war with Russia, folks. A nuclear armed power while we have 2,000 nuclear weapons on hair trigger alert. Yes, I'm going here today, guys. With the current events that we're seeing, we're at the brink of World War III. And it's necessary that you do have some equipment on hand you can make some type of shelter just to get through but I am also going to show you other maps depending on where you live and where you're at you don't want to be near plants that could melt down which could potentially be even more dangerous than a nuclear bomb so we're going to go over that a little bit we're going to go over some of the supplies that you want to have on hand have a flashlight you could run out of batteries very fast I probably think a wind-up flashlight would be good to have. Keep uh, up to date, fully filled first aid kit around. Have one of those portable radios that those wind-up radios would probably be a good idea in a situation if you run out of batteries. Of course, food and water. Hopefully, you have a good supply of water, and if you don't have a life straw. You can get one for 20 bucks. Also start thinking of just keeping as much water as possible. You know, I have a distiller. I'm running gallons of water with that. Food. You don't want to keep loads of meat in a freezer and then your freezer go out and then all that food is just bad. You want to have lots of dry food on hand with long shelf lives. Beans last a long time. You can keep beans, dry beans, and literally keep those for years and they won't go bad. Blankets may be needed for warmth or shock protection. Fire extinguisher, tools, hacksaw, axe, pliers, crowbar, shovel. may be necessary to remove debris or to exit out of your shelter and do rescue work gas mask I have about three four gas masks now believe it or not I also bought extra filters for them so you know if the situation arises so it's good to have just in case if you do have to go out into the elements 
gloves, rubber gloves will serve to cover any small overlook skin wounds that might prevent entry of radioactive particles into the bloodstream. Head covering, some sort of tight fit net used to cover your hair completely should be worn. Coveralls, preferably of a light color and loose fit, tuck into your boots or overshoes will provide an effective and practical working outfit that can later be discarded along with your clothes when you have left the radioactive area become into the elements. Probably be good too to have a Geiger counter so if you're in your shelter and you can take measurements to see you know once the, the levels of radioactivity go down. So you want to have boots and overshoes which will prevent radioactive particles from adhering to your shoes and will be most helpful in working in flooded areas. If overshoes or boots are not handy, you can wrap your shoes with clothes and be discarded later along with any radioactive particles. I recommend everybody that, you know, obviously if there's an EMP, nuclear reactor is melting down. Or even if there is a nuclear blast, the power is going to go out, it's not going to stay up forever unless you have, you know, solar cells or something like that, which would probably be good to have so you could be up and running. Well, if it's an EMP, you'd want to have your stuff protected with a Faraday cage or something. So, if you have that a Faraday cage, you could store your solar shields in there and then take them out, and you could be up and running. Print it out on paper, just some of these main things of what to have, what to buy. This is the advanced precautions, your bomb shelter. The best protection from an atomic explosion is the properly constructed shelter. This can be built in the open or a specifically reinforced room in your basement. The room can be made any size you wish but should have no windows, since glass transmits the deadly gamma rays. Some means of getting out preferably two exits should be provided. So gamma goes to glass, huh? The most flimsy structures will give you complete protection against heat flash. Protection against the deadly gamma rays and neutrons is a main consideration. Lead is the most effective shielding device, but since lead is expensive and not practical, your next best bet is shelter of reinforced concrete or perhaps reinforced concrete with a thick layer of earth over the top. If built outside, completely underground or partially above ground, solid earth walls and ceilings six feet thick will reduce the intensities of the gamma rays to practically zero even directly. So this is depending on how far away you are from the bomb blast. It's the thickness of the concrete here. You would need 32 inches of concrete if you're a thousand feet away from the blast. So uh, that's about almost three feet right there. That's from the heat radiation. Okay. Buried shelters only 900 feet from ground zero withstood the blast in Nagasaki, and none were damaged beyond one half mile. Semi buried shelters of this type used in Europe in World War II for protection against conventional bombs would provide worthwhile protection against atomic explosions. Outside shelters buried or semi buried should be located well clear of buildings to avoid hazards from debris and fire. Outside shelters buried or semi buried should be located well clear of buildings to avoid hazards from debris and fire. Outside shelters designed for a static load of 500 pounds per square foot should provide protection against blast at one half mile from ground zero if an earth cover of at least two feet is provided. The cover is necessary for protection against ionizing radiation. The shelter should be capable of being closed up so as to be airtight. Doors should close tightly against seals in the frame. At least two means of exit are essential. Concrete or hard packed earth building materials do not become dangerously reactive when bombarded by gamma rays. If your atomic shelter, whether inside or outside, adequate drainage and ventilation should be provided. Basements of homes, especially if they extend beyond the main structure of the house, offer reasonable protection against blast damage, provided they are not too near the center of the explosion and have outside escape hatches to be used in case the house collapses or catches fire. Now these are the places in the United States which are potential nuclear targets. Anything you see with a black dot is probably where a lot of missile silos are. 
And those spots are going to be targeted heavily. If there's a nuclear war with Russia or Iran or China, you can expect those places to be hit very hard. Montana, as you can see, look at all those missile silos in black. We also have those, looks like they have these three main places right in Colorado, Utah, that border there. So you want to be away from these black dots if something were to go down. Some of these purple sites, I think those are targets as well. Some of these are nuclear reactors. I did mention that uh, earlier in this video that one nuclear reactor could potentially have as much nuclear material as a nuclear strike would have. And, you know, with a nuclear bomb, you don't have all the radioactive isotopes in a nuclear bomb. But in a nuclear reactor, you do have all the radioactive isotopes. So it's potentially much more dangerous to be in a meltdown situation. Obama's out there threatening their cyber hack attack. They could cyber hack the systems of our reactors, shut down the power, and we could have a meltdown just from something like that or an EMP. So that's something to keep in mind is that if you're near one of these nuclear plants, well, you definitely probably should have some type of bomb shelter anyway. Because if one of these things goes down, you have a place where you can go into and then hopefully, you know, when the winds change and when the radiation levels go down some, you know, you can go out, maybe make an escape run. That's something to think about. So, I think this is another important map for you to copy, have it on hand. If something were to happen, you could make a plan and, you know, find a place that is far away from a black or purple dot. I have some Canadian maps. So, this will also give you an idea of some places you want to stay away from in Canada. Now you have nuclear war target over there in Winnipeg. That's probably not a good place to be over there in Manitoba. You have a secondary target near Saskatchewan border with Alberta in the middle there. Here's another map. Now it looks like there's a lot of targets, nuclear war targets, are going to be in that Great Lakes region because you have all those nuclear reactors there. That's why it's stupid to have nuclear reactors, because they're a target. And nuclear reactors, they, they don't withstand nuclear bomb. They don't reinforce them to withstand nuclear bomb. So it's a terrible situation. You would rather be hit with a nuclear bomb than have one of these reactors go into a meltdown. That's my opinion, anyway. The amount of material inside of these reactors, if it's been sitting there, the spent fuel and these spent fuel pools, that thing goes up. It's a lot more material than a nuclear bomb. So, have some potassium iodine on hand. This is a, a quick shelter that you could use with your car. And they call it a car over trench shelter. It's the expedient fallout shelter. So if you're, you know, if you're on the radio and you hear, oh, we're under an intimate nuclear attack, or you got like an old car or something, you could make a trench, use your car to give you some protection. So here in this scenario, you have a station wagon that's being used, and you could fit up to six people, less with the car smaller. The shelter can be built in areas where the groundwater or rock is close to the ground. Surface shelter can be constructed by two persons working in a total of about eight hours. Select a level site, dig a small test hole about ten inches deep. Move all loose earth from the bottom and push the point of your thumb into the undisturbed earth in the bottom of the hole. If you cannot push your thumb deeper than an inch, the earth should be suitable for the shelter. If thumb Penetrates deeper than one inch, move to another site and repeat test because earth at that test site is not suitable. So you want some stability in your earth. Stake out dimensions shown for trench and entryway. Note that the length of trenchway must be four feet less than overall length of the car. So this is another great picture that you probably want to print out and just have it.
Okay, your tools and materials. Your car, caution car, must have at least 44 inches of width between inside walls of tires. Pick and long handled shovel. Plastic sheeting and or cloth. Approximately 10 to 12 bed sheets or equivalent area of other materials will be required. So you need 10 or 12 bed sheets. Bed sheets. You're gonna need some plastic sheeting. It's gonna have. It's good to have that plastic sheeting. You can also put it on your windows. Some tape. Sandbags, sacks, or pillowcases, nine required, so you're going to need nine pillowcases or sandbags. 50 feet of strong string or cord and a knife. Yardstick or measuring tape. Work gloves for each worker. Stakes, you need four stakes. Now step three. Excavate the trench and entryway as trench deepens. Repeat earth stability test on bottom of trench. If earth becomes softer, do not deepen trench. Place excavated earth away from trench so that car can be driven over trench. 4. Line trench with plastic or cloth line should touch floor of trench and extend outward of the limit of earth. Fill after trench is lined carefully and drive car over trench to the position shown. Have some guide to the driver of the trench. Step 5. Remove all seats if possible. Cover floor and trunk with plastic. Place one foot of earth, fill in trunk and on floor. Step six, trench and entryway detail. Place plastic cover over entrance and ventilation openings. Secure under hood and trunk lid. Step 7. Secure plastic to sides of car as shown here and above and use wood or stick wedges at hood and trunk to hold plastic. Also secure it with door as shown above. Step 9. Place sandbags around entrance and bank earth around them. Step 10. Place 8 inches of earth on car hood. So that earth is going to help block some of those gamma rays. Step 11. Dig shallow drainage ditch around fill. So you can use the sandbags also to keep you warm because it's going to keep in. Keep out the cold. Probably having a couple people in there with you is going to keep you warm as well. So that's why they're saying the 44 inch minimum because you don't want the car to fall down on you. So technically you could probably have a couple cars next to each other and you could uh, fit more people in there that way. So yeah, I think this would be a great diagram for you to print out. Just to have it on hand because we haven't been this close to a nuclear exchange with Russia since um, 1976. So it's serious. Very serious. And some of the new weapons, some of the new bombs that Russia has, they actually have nuclear weapons that could blow up could literally blow up the state of Texas. There are some of the newest weapons and the problem with their, their newer missiles is that they have missiles that have countermeasures and they've actually made these missiles take random directions so they're harder to hit. They have stealth technology now and the countermeasures probably like little drones will fly out of it and confuse whatever is trying to follow it so it's pretty serious. I think they have about 36 of those warheads available. Would they use their most strongest stuff? I don't know. Probably they have something called the dead man's hand where uh, they can't even stop it once that thing gets going really. And that's their one of their policies is that they don't really hold back once they do a nuclear exchange. I think they're going <laughs> to 
it's not going to be just a couple, in my opinion. It's not going to be Nakasaki Hiroshima. It's going to be uh, a lot bigger, a lot worse, a lot more sophisticated. That's another thing that I was thinking is that if you live by one of these dots, which is like a missile silo, I guess, expect probably random missiles to keep firing at these positions because they're probably going to want to knock those nuclear missiles that are going up the missile silo to knock them out with an atom bomb. So these places are going to be hit very heavy. Some of the Russian nuclear silos, they actually can withstand a nuclear bomb. I'm sure some of ours are the same way. So they're going to be hitting these places multiple times. 